Hello guys, my name is Eric Stigio and today I want to show you how I did this illustration of a guard demon for sorcerer and bringer and I guess enjoy and I hope you will learn something new or whatever so just let's just go to the illustration. So the basically first thing I wanted to say is like I started experimenting a little bit more with this microphone and it turns out I pretty much need to deep throat it so it will catch some volume it's extremely quiet so if anybody of you knows how to like boost boost it or something or to just use some external app for it to be louder or a little bit louder it will be great so going back to the illustration i pretty much uh, yeah i recorded the process uh, how i am drawing over the 3d model because in the previous videos I forgot to record this parts. So in here you can see how the process pretty much looks. So I pretty much draw on top of the model and try to make it look a little bit better. And the huge advantage of this type of thing, like of this method of drawing is I will get all the foreshortening right. So in this case, for example, his at the moment left arm, the one holding the stick, uh, is in pretty heavy like perspective. It's really like, place directly in front of me so in this case like the 3d model and the 3d camera takes care of all the perspective issues i might might encounter so the hand more or less is like in the good size or in the size it is supposed to be and for this painting painting like it was quite nice to make but in this demon the face was giving me nightmares like I had so many problems with the face or how to paint his face or whatever to do with his face it was kind of crazy because like with every other illustration i had like the general idea how the face should look like and in this one like i had only a clue what i want for the face but there were so many subtle things that I, that I couldn't get right i was like redoing the face over and over again and later you will see how many times or how many versions this demon had for his face and for what is happening on the screen as you can see i downloaded some different references for the whole abdominal chest muscles and everything i wanted to make him a little bit more buffy a little bit more shredded with some like really visible physique because i thought if like he's some sort of a eternal demon guard or not like pretty much a guard he needs to be a little bit more stacked up to make a little bit to look a little bit more dangerous in this case so if for example there were some skinny demons as a guards you like you wouldn't feel they're as dangerous as pretty much a buffed up demon so i guess yeah and also i wanted to paint some muscles because back there when i was doing this illustration i felt like really studying all the muscles and everything like i really wanted to nail down the anatomy and I kind of had a lot of problems with it, so I was still using and I still am using a lot of different references. But I guess like painting all this anatomy stuff kind of gave me something. So at the moment, I strongly believe I'm a little bit better with it. And in here, I start with the face after like coloring the black and white sketch. And oh boy, it was a nightmare. Like I remember how many times I tried to make this face, how many times I basically stopped right, like recording or stopped painting and went up for a walk because like this face was so damn hard. Like I have no idea why, but every time I was trying to do something, it looked goofy, it looked silly, it looked like happy or not dangerous at all or pretty much dumb. Like. I was trying so many different things and in the end like I guess like for the whole illustration that took me around seven to eight hours with all the sketching and everything the face was like two hours of the whole process so this was like quarter of the whole painting process was just trying to figure out the face but it was in the end a good thing because like I had to persist with all the different changes and how it will look like and how to make it look a little bit good and it's also one of the really good rules uh, in my opinion uh, for like a self-critique and a really good tip for a painting how to improve a little bit faster is if something does not look right for you and you know you can like rework it just try to rework it because probably it won't look good for anybody else and 
if something looks good for you or looks good enough for you, I guess it's time to move on and it's, try, it's time to make some new illustration. And if something does not look good for you and you try to rework it, but you have no idea why, I also think you should pretty much leave it as it is, do, uh, do it as best as you can and later just try to like extend your process to make something a little bit better in the next illustrations or in the next concepts or, or in the next whatever. And as you can see also on the screen, I downloaded some different facial references for myself because like I had in mind the idea how I want his face to look like, but I needed a lot of different visual clues for all the proportions on the face. So I tried to combine something like with this really, really restless looking eyes with a little bit of danger in them but to give it a little bit more of a vibe of vibe of a something that is undead or something like this like i kind of tried to make him look a little bit more like angry dangerous but to not care at all if you understand what i mean but later you will see what I meant. I think in the end, I kind of managed to make the facial expression as I wanted. But even looking, looking at this process at the moment and doing a voiceover, I'm like having a flashbacks with all the problems that I had with it and with all the things that I had to rework. And also in here, there are a lot of different anatomical problems. Like for example, his like the arm in the back is a little bit pushed to forward, I will need to change like a lot of different things uh, in terms of like the body composition and everything. But in the end, I guess it was one of the most educational illustrations I have ever done. Like the amount of problems I have encountered was way greater than I expected it to be. And I really had to like use the whole arsenal of my weapons to figure out how to do everything, how to paint everything. So it was like a lot of struggle, but in the end, I guess it was really worth it. So I also was trying to add a little bit more of a cool factor to it. So I tried to like experiment a little bit more with the design, like while doing the illustrations. So I tried adding him some different horns, some metal parts sticking out of his body. It was kind of like designing on a go in, in this case. So there were a lot of different experiments for this one. And for the background, I like with the client's brief, I needed to keep it really simple. But since it was some sort of a guard, I thought, I thought uh, it will be a good idea, for example, to make some sort of a, um, not chapel, not cathedral, uh, some sort of a temple uh, behind him with some really simple, like really graphic shapes. So it will nicely add a little bit to his backstory, like where he's standing or what is he doing currently and anything. So I thought like giving him some sort of a temple was a good idea, but later I will switch it for the, some sort of a city or something like this. So in this case, it's more like a demon city guard. And in here you can also see the next variation of the face when I kind of started liking where this was going. So I was also experimenting a lot with his horns or with his face or with whatever. And I kind of felt like in the end, like maybe I will try to make a demon that is kind of infused with some like metal parts. So for example, like the, the spikes that's coming out of his chest and his shoulders and everything, maybe it's actually a part of his body. So I thought maybe giving him some sort of a like jaw extensions made out of like some magical black demon metal and some horns that are pretty much also metal will look pretty nice. And in this moment, I also had to switch like the glow from his face to the red one, because for the other illustration I had been doing, I was doing, uh, we had to, like, I had to switch some facial features for the red ones. So they will be all a little bit more unified. And for the background in here, you can also see I just downloaded from the web some sort of a cloud photo. And I guess the architectural photos that I placed in the background are from some Gumroad pack, but I have no idea which one it was. But I guess it was one of the free ones. So 
yeah, it's really nice to have this type of things because if you can also place some photos in the background and they will like incorporate a lot of like the noise detail in the background, mm, the morale boost is really high because you can uh, like you can quickly see the improvement in the overall quality of the image. And also in here, I remember when I was like, okay, I have enough of this face, maybe I will just use the dramatic light and just cover his face. And it kind of worked. But going back to the background, uh, also using the photo templates or photo bashing techniques or whatever, it's a great idea in my opinion to boost the overall quality of the, of the illustration. Also, if I can see how many details I have in background, I have a little bit better idea what amount of details I need to place uh, on the character itself. So I have like this context of detail from the whole environment. And going back to the to the demon itself, I was also checking the previous versions to see maybe something works a little bit better. And I was trying to figure out how to like do all these cool renderings on his chest and everything. So once again, I just pretty much placed some reference photos and I was lucky enough to find the middle middle chest from the front with this cool like rim light or bounce light on his pack. So I could like incorporate it to, to the image itself. And also I stole half of the abdominal muscles from all, one of the photos, mirrored them and just warped them on, on top of my demon. So it also gave a little bit more of a cool details for the whole muscles, especially since I'm not that good with the whole anatomy things. So if needed, I really will use pretty much everything to, to make it look a little bit a little bit better. And same for the hand, I was not really pleased with the quality, with the rendering, because this illustration was done after the, the previous demon, like with the fat one with the club, where I really liked the rendering on his leg. So I also tried to do a similar rendering in this case for his arm, because the foreshortening is really similar in this case. And it was a lot of different experimenting, experiments with some textures and rendering techniques and placing some highlights. Also, guys doing exercises are a great reference for hands and everything because you can pretty much find every single exercise out there that will be doing something that your character is doing. So for example, if you are like, if you can't find a reference for yourself, just took it as I did in here with the bed sheet on, on myself, or just search for some fitness YouTube videos where someone is doing something so there is a huge chance someone will have like this exact pose of a bicep curl or pretty much whatever because for example if you do a bicep curl with like a barbell it's kind of like holding some stuff stick one down or whatever so it's a cool reference i guess and in this case like i wanted him to give him like this robe uh, on his bottom part and i couldn't find a good reference so as i said i pretty much went off, took some some sort of old bed sheet, placed the lamp next to myself and just pasted it and used it directly in the illustration and also used it as a reference for rendering of the sheet because for the sheets. Because with the material rendering I'm also not this good. Like I have the basic idea how to do it, but I have never studied the topic like really in depth. So I was like using a photo because in this case the quality was what I was care, caring the most about. So it was not about like proving myself I can paint it, I can paint it, it was more about doing it right. So I was, as I said previously, using everything that I had uh, like in my skill capabilities to make it look a little bit more, uh, a little bit better. And also I tried to match some shape language for the background with the demon itself. So there won't be that much of a contrast between them. So I added some spikes to the architecture behind him. So it's slight variation for a Gothic ar like Gothic architecture that is in the background, but with this demon twist that I felt will look kind of okay. So if you are a demon living in a Gothic environment that has a lot of spikes, it's kind of natural you also will have some spikes and I felt it is okay. And also if you will add some sort of a fog, like it's 
always a good thing like it looks pretty much 99% of the times okay if you add a fog because it will greatly separate your foreground objects with your background objects and this way it will pop more so the readability will go like through the roof and also it looks kind of cool it's a cheap and it's a extremely cheap effect but i think it looks it looks really cool and for the rob i also thought maybe it will be cool if there were some spikes in his like hip area that will grow out of his body and maybe they will just like pierce the material through his body and it will pretty much hang freely on him just connected to all the spikes that he has on his body and in here i am also photo bashing some 3d models that i made like back in the day in blender because i was experimenting a little bit more with the cloth sim cloth simulation and i kind of felt like it's okay like making a cloth simulation is like extremely easy and it's just pretty much pressing one button and just pr picking the point where the cloth need to like be hanged on like you need to pick a point that won't move and after doing like i guess 50 of these type of renders i pretty much had the whole library with every single fold possible that i could use in my illustrations and in this case i used them and it gave a really nice effect really quickly so i i hadn't i forgot the the word Mm, there was no need for me to paint all these like materials and everything of course i should like just for the sake of practice and i guess i will study a little bit more of the all the faults and everything but if you want to make something look good quickly just do it however you are if it works it is a good it's a good like way of working and usually in terms of experiments i try to experiment a lot with different techniques and to prove myself i can do something if i make an illustration for myself like a personal illustration but if something is done for a client i want to achieve like the best result possible as quick as possible using as many tricks as possible just to make the whole image as good as i am possibly can so i am utilizing every single skill that i have and for the demon i also thought uh, maybe giving him some sort of a guan dao i guess would be a cool idea because like i remembered the shapes of these blades are pretty similar for the whole shape language that the demon have and it kind of worked and also in here i am adding some rings uh, like the separation rings for the whole stick and also in here i was also experimenting a little bit more with maybe making him like glowing red like the spikes being like hot red and i kind of discovered the method how to do it quickly and i made a small note on the left side and in here i finally made a face that i really liked i once saw i guess a horse school and the horses and deers and everything has this like small teeth on the front of the school that they are using for like uh, pinching the not pinching for eating the grass like for cutting down the grass with them and i felt maybe giving him this type of look will do will make him look a little bit more dangerous and this like really serious not caring at all but dangerous type of face thing and i guess it kind of worked and also i really like the combination of the colors because it was a really strong focal point for his face because it's pretty much glowing red and it's in the complementary colors because the greens and the reds are a complementary color so the contrast between them will pretty much will always look nicely and also there are a little bit like yellows in there like the flame is pretty much red and yellow so in the whole painting there are also a lot of teals and blues so everything it works like in the complementary colors type of things so it's also a really nice thing to make some nice contrast in the artwork and also for the background i felt i am i need a little bit of like the this middle ground plane or something like this so maybe instead of just showing him like you have the foreground with the demon and the background with the city i thought like giving the different plane like the third plane 
will make a justice. So maybe he is just like patrolling the, the streets of the city and maybe he is between some clumps of dead grass or something like this. Like I cannot imagine demons growing nice flowers. So I thought maybe just some dead sticks or something like this will make a little bit more interesting. And also it creates a lot of like nice noise, nice noise because uh, having some organic things when the whole illustration is really like sharp and rigid will always make it look a little bit more, maybe not calm, but a little bit more visually pleasing or interesting, or at least this is my opinion for this type of things. So if it is possible, I usually try to incorporate some organic things to the painting. If it's, of course, if it will make sense. I don't say like, I will place a tree in a hell just for the hell to have a tree because it will look nice. Uh, in my opinion, it also has to make a lot of sense or at least some sense. And in this case, when it's a city, I can imagine they want to make it a little bit nicer by using some that sticks, plants, or or pretty much whatever. And the whole illustration is quite close to the finish. You know, like at this stage, it was a lot of polishing pretty much and rendering like all the details and everything, trying to like redo some parts of the illustration, trying to not get like all messed up with the layers. Because for this type of illustrations, I really like to keep like the main objects on a separate layers, but I also like to overpaint them on a single layer and later it causes a lot of different problems for me. So it's a bad habit, but this is just the way I work. And I had to make some like joining and cutting of everything. So I could like join all the needed layers together. And also for the belt, I felt it's kind of empty. So if he is a demon and he is made out of metal, I thought like giving him some chains belt, like chain belt made out of chains and the school uh, will be pretty metal and will fit for the whole theme. Also, since the different, like the other demons were also decorated with schools, I thought it will be a nice thing to have in the painting. So all of them will have something in common. So this love for schools and everything. And also it looks kind of cool. Like I tried to make it a little bit more stylized. So, so the school will fit uh, to the overall design of the, of the demon. And this is the hand in the back. Nothing really special. I was trying to add a little bit more aerial perspective to it. So the planes of the fingers will read a little bit better. And also I tried to add some rim light because rim light is always a nice thing to add. Like it will always make your like character pop up of the screen a little bit more. And especially if you have like a really strong light source. So for example, in the background, the light between the buildings is quite, is quite uh, strong. And the light coming out from his face is also quite strong. Uh, it gives like a really nice opportunity to incorporate some rim lights. So the whole illustration will look a little bit better. But for the rim lights, it's also extremely easy to overdo it completely. So I think you should really need to limit yourself. So you won't pretty much make an outline for the whole character because most of the time it looks kind of shitty. But yeah, and in here I was also like redoing the horns and everything, tried to add a little bit more of a texture to it and a little bit more of the highlights. So the whole thing will read a little bit better. And I remember when I was painting it, I was extremely proud of the face. Like I really liked how it turned out. It was like the best demon face I could possibly do for this guy back in the days. And I really like it to this day. Like I feel it has this animalistic something and it's maybe not that typical. Like I guess I saw this type of face in some projects, but it was for example, like a minority of the projects I have seen this type of thing. And also what I think is really cool for the design of this guy is like, you can't really tell if he is wearing something metal on his face or the metal, if like, if the metal it's, is really growing out of his face. So it was a really interesting thing in my opinion, from the design point of view. 
and yeah. And for the final touches, I usually try to like duplicate some layers, do some auto coloring, auto contrast, auto whatever, and try to play a little bit more with the blending modes, with the, all the curves and layers, levels, and just some ad adjustments. I strongly believe you don't really need to paint everything perfectly. If you can use adjustments, just use them. Like if you are using Photoshop, this is what Photoshop was made for. So also knowing a little bit about the photo retouching, photo ret retouche, I have no idea how to say it. I guess it's the first time I say this word ever in English. In Polish language it's retouche, so retouch, retouching, maybe something like this. I don't know. And also adding some haze, and I felt like you can be a, a demon without a flaming eyes. So I also took some flames from textures.com and placed them upon his eyes, did some color dodge, I guess, some adjustments. So it looks like his eyes like are having these small flames. I guess it kind of adds a little bit more to his whole character and also adding some dust particles because dust particles always look good. And also some flame particles coming out of his mouth is also a nice small detail that kind of binds everything together. And there is a small fountain on the left because I felt like a fountain will be a nice thing to have in there. And at the moment I don't think it should be tangent to his arm, but I guess yeah. I hope you learned something new and you enjoyed watching it and subscribe, like, share or whatever. Uh, next videos will also be a demon and later I will maybe change the topic. So goodbye. And thanks for watching. Here is the final painting. I hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, till the next time.